She did say, you know, her first prime minister was Winston Churchill, and that was before I was born. So it gave me a sense of how long she'd been the monarch, even at that stage. When you're prime minister, there is that particular relationship between the head of state and head of government. And it's an opportunity, which you don't get in other circumstances, to be able to speak openly about the issues that you're dealing with. Whenever you're with Her Majesty, you always think, you know, she has seen so much and heard so much and had to deal with so many different people that you think probably nothing ever surprises her. I enjoyed hearing her and I hope that we thought the same things together. Don't forget she's been Queen longer than any of us was ever Prime Minister. It was often said of the Queen that she had a levelling effect on almost everyone. Whoever you were, Prime Minister, President, Prince, Pauper. She'd met many like you before. Older, grander, richer, wiser, smarter. What was there she had not seen? This indeed was an historic occasion. An historic picture too. This was, after all, a monarch who began her reign, dealing with Winston Churchill. So imagine being a new prime minister headed for the weekly audience with the monarch. It's probably the greatest privilege of being a prime minister is that you get to see this extraordinary public servant um, up close and spend time with them. You see them for one hour every week while Parliament is sitting. The prime minister, your majesty. It is very formal. You walk into the room and you bow and then you uh, are offered a seat. But it's once you start talking, she has a very good way of putting you at ease and what was going wrong or what was going right. So much clearer and actually you'd come out always more confident because you just spent an hour with one of the greatest public servants of all time. Well, it is an incredible experience and there are many other leaders around the world who find it quite extraordinary that the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom has that weekly audience with Her Majesty the Queen. And it's, uh, I think the first time I, I went to an audience with Her Majesty, it was um, a sense of huge honour, um, but a bit of trepidation because I wasn't quite sure what it was going to be like. And this is your monarch. Fourteen Prime Ministers in all made the journey to the palace for their weekly hour with the Queen, the 15th never quite getting the chance. They described these meetings as a little like a confession. I suppose she had been the repository over so many years with so many secrets. She knew how to keep a secret, but most important, she knew how to give the Prime Minister a sounding board and a person to listen to to them and talk to them in a way that no other person could. Did you find you were completely honest with her on that basis that you felt, you know, you were able to sort of unburden yourself, really? Yes, I mean, I really did unburden myself on many occasions when things were really difficult, when you're taking either really difficult decisions or maybe you had a huge problem within your cabinet and you were talking about it with her. And I felt I could say anything to her. Um, and, you know, as the relationship grew and as time went on, obviously, you get to know the person, not just her as the monarch, but her as the person. Did you find her a personal support to you? I think it was Wilson who said that it was the only conversation he could have in a week with someone of real substance that he didn't think was going to be leaked or, you know... That's or definitely maybe... true, because there's no-one else in the room. <clears throat> and so you feel you can reveal what you're really thinking about something, the real mm. worries you have about a particular course of action or consequences or problems that you've got or political problems or problems within the cabinet. You know, you felt you could say absolutely anything. So what might one ask was the purpose of it? That is something all her living prime ministers seem incredibly clear on. The one thing that shines through with Her Majesty is the sense of duty that she has put herself, if you like, personal interest to one side in the interests of her country and her sense of duty. I think what is also striking is how respected she is around the world. Um, absolutely, when you meet other world leaders, um, there is huge respect for Her Majesty. So she has shown that role of a woman in that position and earned respect around the world. She had visited over 100 countries. She knew most of these foreign leaders probably better than you did. Mm. And you knew you were listening to someone who really knew mm. what they were talking about. Did you ever feel nervous? I mean, was it, was it a little bit like doing your homework? Like, all right, I've got to make sure that I'm yes. across this because I know she's going to ask me some difficult yeah, questions. You, about you definitely, whatever subject you were going to talk about, 
you always knew she would have, you know, watched the latest news bulletins, you knew she read everything that went into her box of papers, you knew if it was anything to do with security or defence or the armed forces uh, or overseas affairs, she'd be immensely knowledgeable. If I asked her for um, her view on, on an issue, she would, she would give it carefully, but, but she, would, she would give it. And if I asked her about things that were to do with where the British people might be or what, what she thought was the state of British opinion, you know, she had a very shrewd sense of where, where the centre of gravity was. And at the end of it all, there was, of course, in each individual case, a very personal relationship forged not just in London, but Balmoral too. Even if you've, you know, mm. been to Buckingham Palace and you've done audiences with Her Majesty, nothing quite prepares you for being, you know, in a cottage halfway up a hillside in Scotland um, with uh, the Duke of Edinburgh cooking you a barbecue and <laughs> Queen handing around the food. That's mm. something I'm never going to forget. It says everything about her, that she worked right until the very end of this, her final summer at Balmoral, her last significant act as monarch to invite her 15th Prime Minister to form a government. Sometimes when you, you, you would watch the Queen and she would be doing ceremonial duties, she's greeting people, she could be quite shy actually when out in, in, in public. It would be easy to miss the real toughness of character that she had. I mean, she was a very tough person. Tough in the best sense. I mean, resolute, strong. She managed to adapt to a world that was so different when she died from when she first became queen. So times, fashions, ideas, people, places even may have changed. Prime Ministers may have come and gone. But the Queen, at least in her devotion to her public role, remained resolutely the same. Above all else, her duty was to be that point of unchanging principle in a changing world. I think she'll be remembered as somebody who was absolutely remarkable. I think it's going to take us a very long time to fully understand just what we've had and just what we've lost.